least uh, Nick your take <clears throat> yeah I believe for Zelensky it's great is a kind of movie star, TV star, great start, everybody applauding to him and welcoming him. So for his own fame, it's great. It's also great for a PR of those countries and maybe for the social media and for mass media, especially in the West, it's great. But will it help the Ukrainian people? I don't think so. But no, man, no matter how many weapons they will get, it will not help them because the uh, country will continue to be destroyed. They just need to reach a peace agreement. Okay. And, and Nick uh, Macron, French President Macron and uh, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz with a very, of course, warm welcome of, of uh, Ukrainian uh, President Zelensky, saying the future of Europe as a whole uh, uh, depends on the future of, of Ukraine. Is that so? I think that uh, what do you uh, refer to as the future of Europe? If it's just a geopolitical game and a game of economy, so yes, maybe it's better for them that Russia and Ukraine will continue their war and uh, Russia will be weakened. Europe maybe will be stronger, but most likely United States will be stronger. But just Europe can't resist United States. But uh, that's the only perspective that it is uh, good for Europe. But for Ukraine, it's definitely bad. And for Ukrainian simple people that living in those small villages that are bombarded every day, it's not good for sure. And for Russian people, the regular ones, it's also not good because they are living under sanctions. Their life is completely messed up also. So it's yeah. also not good for them. Ina, do you get what, what Nick is saying, that uh, uh, the war is perhaps, quote unquote, good for Europe, but, but not for Ukraine? Nick, Ina, please chime in. Uh, uh, I think, okay, if I'm speaking, I think that uh, for uh, Ukrainian politicians, for the president, for some uh, rich billionaires, maybe this war is really good because they are getting more popular and more uh, have more fame, more power, more money. Yeah, for them it's great. But as long as I know, the regular people in Ukraine, they even can't speak because if they are saying something that it's not in line with what the government wants you to say, then they even can be prosecuted or they can be jailed. At least that's what I know. That's the information that I have. Maybe it's wrong. But if it's Really, the situation, it's really bad because you can't say that all Ukraine is one victim, like the speaker before said. It's 40 yes, something Ina, million so, people. So. Yeah. Yeah. Peter wrong, wrong, Zelmayev, right and here. Nicole Jochen and uh, Ina Sapsen, we're uh, putting a quick stop right here, but we're back in a few minutes with part two of our debate. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back uh, to the summit. Uh, still with us, uh, Peter Zelmayev, Ina Sapsen, and uh, Nicole Jochen. Thank you all so very much uh, for staying with us. We're also, of course, staying on topic. But before we get back to our conversation, let's take a listen uh, to one of uh, many speeches uh, by the Ukrainian uh, president this week, this time uh, with a uh, British uh, lawmaker saying thanks, but but we need more. Let's take a listen. We have freedom. Give us wings to protect it. I trust, I trust this symbol will help us for our next coalition, coalition of the planes. And I appeal to you and the world with simple and yet most important words. Combat aircrafts for Ukraine. Wings for freedom. So let's uh, get to it uh, with uh, quite an upfront uh, uh, phrasing here. Will it ever be enough for Ukraine? Uh, are they being a bit greedy? Uh, let's begin uh, with another quick fire round and pick up the conversation uh, uh, from there. Uh, Nick, uh, your 30 seconds are on. I think it's a great input to the world the industry of the war of weapons, especially for the American ah. companies that are doing a, a great profit from that. So maybe for them it's great. But for Ukraine, as I said before, I don't think they can have okay. enough weapons if they are against a superpower that have nuclear weapons and have enough weapons to destroy them and the world actually also. So what's the point? Ina, what's the point Nick is asking? I'm sure you, you have an answer. Nick, is there a solution that, that can satisfy both sides? I think that the only solution is that both sides 
will sit and will speak and will agree on a peace uh, deal. I th- said from the beginning it was a big mistake of Russia to invade to Ukraine. I am against this war. I'm against any war. But you, I don't think that Ukrainian people, the simple one, that their homes are bombarded and their relatives are dying, I don't think that they want to be the front of NATO and to defend all Europe and United States. I don't think... From my perspective and my understanding, this is the dream of the mothers of Ukraine that their children will defend the children of American mothers or of European mothers that they are continue to have a great life in their countries. I don't think that that's the case. Maybe for some politicians in Ukraine it's great, as I said, but I don't think for regular people it's good. Uh, and on that note, uh, we obviously have uh, so much more to discuss, but we will have uh, to end our current discussion uh, here in a sub St. Peter as Omayev. Nicole Jochen, thank you so very much uh, for your time and insight. Uh, we truly do appreciate it. And hopefully we will see you on the show again. Um, thank you very much for this.